If you don't do what we tell you, you'll just be pulverized. We don't care what you think or what you say. Why is why does the media control the public's opinion like this? Or what's the mechanism by which the government influences the media to control? It doesn't. It or, doesn't. I mean, the government has the almost no influence over the media. But so how does it happen? Like why? I mean. Well, What's the underlying mechanism? It's, it's like asking, the motivations. That they, it's kind of like asking, in, how does the, how does the, suppose somebody asks, how does the government convince General Motors to try to increase profit? Here are huge corporations which have the, the, which share the interests of the corporate sector that dominates the government. The government can't tell the media what to do. They don't have the power to do it here. I mean, let me give you a, 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 a simple example, really simple. Uh, when the, uh, you know, the current intifada started in, in the occupied territories, started on September 29th, okay. on October 1st, two days later, uh, Israel started using U.S. helicopters. There are no Israeli helicopters. They all come from here. Started using U.S. helicopters to attack civilian targets apartment complexes and so on, killing and wounding dozens of people. That went on for two days. No, no Palestinian fire, just stone throwing from kids. On October 3rd, after two days of this, Clinton made the biggest deal in a decade to send military helicopters to Israel. Uh, the media here refused to publish it. To this day, Like, you know, I happen to know the editors of the Boston Globe. I've been living there for 35 years, and I know all these guys. I actually went and talked to them, you know, and they simply made it clear they're not going to publish it. Uh, and the same decision was made by every other newspaper in the United States. The government, literally every one, the, somebody did a database search. The only reference to it in the country was a letter to the editor in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, did the government tell them not to publish it? No. If it had told them not to, they probably would have published it just out of indignation. Uh, and, you know, that happens to be an unusually narrow and easily identifiable case, but it generalizes. The current U.S. leadership is extreme in this respect. Uh, but they uh, are quite frankly and openly committed to the uh, use of violence to control the world, and they say so. Uh, so, for example, when Prince Abdullah of Saudi Arabia was here a couple of weeks ago, uh, he tried to uh, persuade U.S. leaders to uh, moderate their support for Israeli violence. And uh, what Abdullah said is uh, there's going to be a uprising in the Arab world it would be really dangerous for your own interests, like oil. And then their reaction was interesting. I mean, he was dismissed, of course, but uh, on interesting grounds. I mean, he was told, you know, it was, rep it was reported in the New York Times, you can read it. He was told, uh, what, he, what they said is, look, uh, just take a look at what we did in to Iraq during Desert Storm. Now we're ten times that strong. If you want to see how strong, take a look at what we just did in Afghanistan. That's what it's for, to show you what can happen to you if you raise your head. So try to, if you don't do what we tell you, you'll just be pulverized. We don't care what you think or what you say. That's their attitude. Uh, and uh, they say so, and it's evident in the actions. Uh, and it's not very good for the world or for the people in the United States. Gandhi was once asked what he thought about Western civilization, <laughs> and his answer was he thought maybe it would be a good idea. And you can say the same about capitalism. Maybe it would be a good idea. We've never had anything remotely resembling it. And the reason we haven't is powerful, you know, the owning class would never permit it. Because they know that, they know perfectly well that if capitalism, uh, if, if capitalist institutions were established, it would destroy the economy in no time. So therefore they insist on a powerful state that intervenes to protect them from the ravages of the market. Okay, 
everybody seems to know this except the economists. Uh, and it's a system that whatever you have, this kind of state capitalist uh, structure, yeah, it does what it does. I mean, I think there are much better systems possible. Uh, and I think we should, just like I think there were better systems possible than feudalism. So you got to try them out and establish them. But there's nothing special about this one.